there are not many, if any, other creative operations conferences that I'm aware of, so uh, it's fantastic that this is happening. And so speaking of that, like you and everyone here, I'm here to talk about creative ops. After all, you can't deliver at the scale of Amazon without effective creative operations. And while the topic of the conversation tends to be around process and technology, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about people, the human element behind creative operations at companies like Amazon. Just a quick disclaimer, I no longer work at Amazon. Uh, after six years, I recently left to take some time off to reboot, relax, and realign on a new path forward. So any of the ideas I share today are my views and my experiences alone and not those of Amazon. Disclaimer, given. <laughs> None of you can come after me now. So that time off has been really valuable for me. Uh, it's been able to, I've been able to really reflect back on my career and get some fresh perspective. Uh, it's, it's also very humbling uh, to look at the mistakes that I've made and the learnings that came out of those mistakes as a leader. And one important thing that I came to realize is that everything meaningful I accomplished in my career was due to a talented team of very creative, hardworking human beings who put tireless effort to drive good ideas forward for the benefit of our customers. We can't do it without our people. And we had some pretty good dogs running around too to motivate us, so that's very helpful at Amazon. But it was a scrappy team of talented designers and builders that created scalable programs and delivered exceptional ad experiences in order to turn Amazon into one of the largest online advertising platforms in the world. And a group of innovative teams who helped optimize and expand Amazon's video streaming service across platforms and geographies while delivering both original and live programming for the entertainment of people in 250 countries. And it took the dedicated and resilient work of teams around the world to support the global rollout of our new streamlined brand, spanning all customer touch points and in, in an ongoing effort to continue constantly improving our service. None of these accomplishments could have happened without the tremendous amount of work, support, and collaboration from exceptional people. All innovative companies, not just Amazon, understand that great things aren't accomplished alone. They're accomplished due to teams. So with that, I want to just pause for a quick second and uh, with a show of hands, I'd like to see who out there is currently responsible for or building teams within their organizations. Good, all right. So you guys care what I'm talking about then, or at least I'm in the right place. I can't guarantee that you're going to care. So as you know, it's the people that make up our teams that are the heartbeat of our companies. They are a competitive advantage and our core differentiator in this highly competitive market. However, as leaders, we have our work cut out for us. There's a staggering majority of employees out there who are not engaged with their work. And less than one third of employees are engaged in their jobs here in the US. It's just mind blowing. It's a crisis of engagement that companies are struggling to get a handle on. One that if not remedied, will become increasingly expensive as you consider the high cost of lost productivity and employee turnover. Employees today have an evolving expectation of what a job means to them. And as leaders, we need to catch up. After all, it's managers who account for the, for the bulk of employee engagement scores, which means we're failing to create environments in which employees feel motivated or even engaged. Today's workforce, especially millennials, don't want to be managed like a set of resources. They want to be led. They want their jobs to have meaning and purpose. They want to be inspired. They want to learn and develop in order to do their best work. And as leaders, we need to do our part to give employees compelling reasons to stay, to keep them motivated, and keep them striving and driving forward. We need to change from culture of collecting paychecks to a culture of meaningful purpose. In other words, we need to create tribes within our organization, 
work in communities motivated by purpose and rallied around a leader. Again, it's our responsibility to build an environment where employees not only contribute, but they continue to develop and thrive. Culture is a key differentiator here between a company of engaged and motivated teams or one full and disengaged, disengruntled employees just going through the motions and looking for a way out. And when it comes to creating culture, words don't matter nearly as much as actions. So, as leaders, if you want to turn team into tribe and create a culture of engagement, you need to first start with building in the right way, informing your team, validating the direction, empowering them, and caring. So these concepts, these everyday actions, are part of a leadership culture and team development program that I've been developing. And I'm only gonna share a portion of it today. Uh, it's not meant to be comprehensive, uh, but hopefully it'll provide some insight to help drive engagement with your teams. Because creating engagement isn't an abstract idea. It's really, boils down to some basic leadership actions. And so given the short time, I'll be going through the content pretty quickly, uh, but I'm, I am going to provide notes afterwards uh, with the additional detail. And you got anyone here is welcome to catch me during the conference, follow up with me after, buy me a beer. Huh? <laughs> so the first step, build. It all starts with hiring. That's where your community starts. It's, it's so incredibly important. It blows my mind when managers and companies are either outsourcing their hiring efforts or just going through the motions, just trying to fill an empty slot because it's so critically important. To create a strong performant team, you need to start with a solid foundation. One built on your company's core principles and values. This keeps your new team members focused and motivated, no matter what's going on within your organization. So to support that, you want to start, uh, when you first bring candidates in for an interview, the critical portion, and it all starts with the interview process. There, intangibles matter, because you want to find problem solvers. Skills and experience got them in the door, resumes, portfolios, but you want to dive deep with interview questions to really understand how they solve problems. Amazon was great at this. Amazon, uh, as you may or may not know, has these infamous leadership principles. Everything that we do at Amazon is focused around those principles. And it comes through more than ever within the hiring process. So everybody in, inter in participating in the interviews has these questions based on leadership principles and they dive deep to understand how people solve problems. And we want those problem solvers at companies like Amazon and other innovative companies around the world because as Kevin mentioned, change is around us all the time. The one constant at Amazon was change. And so you might bring in a skill set one day that may be valuable and then the next day it's not and so you want problem solvers. You want to set that foundation. It's also important to get your existing team, if you have one, involved in the hiring and onboarding process. Throughout the hiring, they can come together, leverage their existing relationships with their team members to understand how they're going to connect with these new people. And then once you bring the candidates in the door, they help onboard those folks. This was another thing that was very prevalent throughout my time at Amazon, is whenever we hired new people, it would be the rest of the team that would help onboard them by uh, choosing a subject area, sitting down with that person, educating, training them. This both offered a lot of really valuable insight to get the new hires off on, a right start, on the right start, but then it also uh, helped create camaraderie. So then finally, once you've found the hiring practices that are, that are effective for you, you want to make sure to turn that into a process because we're all dealing within the creative ops space at a level of scale 
that requires consistency. And so that process is gonna bring that consistency. So now that you've hired folks, you got them in the door, you have to give them the appropriate information. You need to build confidence with them and your existing team through clear, concise communication. Establishing a culture of transparency is critical to setting up your team for ongoing success. As the Dalai Lama that said, a lack of transparency results in distrust and a deep sense of insecurity. So no matter how many uh, happy hours you do or team events, if your people don't have the right information, they're always going to feel a little bit uncertain and insecure. So when you first bring on folks, or if there's a change in direction, you want to make sure that the roles and responsibilities of your team are crystal clear. This increases accountability and cuts down on wasted time. Amazon was not good at this. Uh, we were a self-discovery culture, so new employees would come into Amazon, they maybe would get an onboarding plan, and then you get sent on your way, and you figure it out. You figure it out as you go. Some people could figure it out within a couple months. Some people, it took six months. That's an amazing amount of wasted productivity. So as a leader, if you put that focus and you rally the team together to give the information that your new hires need, they will be so much more productive right from the start. It's also important to set expectations with other stakeholder teams, to offer clarity around what your team's process is and priority. There's so much wasted conversation that happens when teams are unsure about what this person does or unsure about how that team works. So as a leader, again, you have to create that transparency. You have to go out and advocate and inform other teams how your team works, why they're doing it, and what the outcome of that's going to be. This cultivates partnerships with other stakeholder groups versus your team just being task takers. And finally, while I know there's going to be a lot of talk about technology today, just a word of warning, as a leader, you need to be flexible with that. For example, I can't stand instant messaging. I hate it. It's too distracting. Things are popping up on my computer. I can't get anything done. It just drives me crazy. And if I was on a team where I was expected to use instant messaging, I would just fail. So be flexible. Also, you need to make sure that the tools that you're using, the technology, is not overly burdensome. Like, talk to your people. Understand how they're using it, where they're having challenges, or where it's working, and make adjustments. And my final point on that is to make sure that you're using technology for good. I've seen too, too often within large companies where people leverage technology to shame and blame people, to call them out for the mistakes you made. Please don't do that. That just creates a level of unsettledness and people don't feel confident. I think it was Seth Godin who made the idea of Tribe popular 10 years ago, who said, people aren't afraid of failure. They're afraid of being blamed or shamed for the results of their work. So there, you move to validate. You don't want assumptions to drive solutions. As leaders, you want to go out of your way to share and distribute information. That includes leveraging data and providing feedback in order to inform a clear direction for your team. So, as a leader, we all know that we need to give our team feedback. That you can never do this enough. It's, you have to go beyond just one-on-ones team meetings. You need to adopt a culture of ongoing, everyday coaching. Because without that input, your team can't improve and grow. They need that, not validation is in I feel good, but that validation is as far as what they're doing is actually having the right impact. On additional note, validation can also come from performance data. Now, I don't mean performance of your people, I mean the outcome of the actual work they're doing. Amazon is a huge data-driven company. We have data galore. It's, it's everywhere. That data helps validate work and establishes benchmarks for your team. So they can understand how they're working and what they're working on impacts the bottom line. 
and again, aligns to that purpose and that end goal that you're working towards. Now, one thing to mention about data, it's great if you're collecting tons of data, but, it, but if it's being kept in a back room somewhere and your people don't have access to it, then it's useless. So you need to make sure that you're creating the pathways to getting that data from wherever it's being collected to your people and then to have conversations around why it's important and what it means. So one thing that uh, really worked at Amazon was uh, when we would get results, and again, you don't have to have some mind-blowing uh, results document, but just little pieces of, I little insights and pieces of data along the way, and just put them up on some sort of internal documentation, in sort of website. We used Wiki at Amazon, but you just start building a Wiki. Start small. Eventually, you will have the most amazing collection of information and that information, not just for your team, but can be shared by other stakeholder teams to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So the fourth step is empowerment. So your team is confident in what they're doing. They're informed in the direction you're going. They have the data to back it up. Now, this is the point where, as leaders, you start to take your hands off the wheel, where, because shared ownership behind the purpose that you've established unifies a sense of responsibility for the team. This fosters an envir environment of growth and development by opening up opportunities. So, first step in empowerment, rally your team around problems. Don't be one of those leaders that feels that they have to do everything themselves. Don't go get your peers hide out in a room and try to solve all the challenging problems that are facing your team, your organization. Bring your team in on it. Bring it, bring, you know, let them see the pimples, the, the defects. Let them come in and understand. You can't hide them from the facts, good or bad. People, people will find this information out and between that time, they're just gonna be insecure. So bring them in, rally them together and help them pro problem solve. After all, from the hiring process, you hired problem solvers. Use them, leverage them. I come from the design and creative thinking space. There's some very creative thinkers out there that can solve problems in ways that a lot of management teams can't ever dream of. And then you support your people by giving them stretch goals, opportunities to go beyond the limits of their day-to-day -day job. Subject matter experts, as SMEs, were a thing that we used within Amazon where people could really find areas of the business to own. And then they would use that information to share and become the, the pinnacle of information uh, for that specific areas, really empowering them to take ownership in not just the task that they're working on, but the direction your team is going. From there, don't get cocky. Also, we have a lot of processing technology that uh, you know, automates a lot of the things we do and optimizes it and you get comfortable thinking that you have it all good, especially within creative operations. You wanna constantly be exploring and experimenting on how to do things better and bring your team in on that. Have them brainstorm ideas, get their feedback, have them drive experiments to see what works and what you can do better. And finally, you gotta care. Come on, th these are people, these are human beings. And so you have to just care for less than yourself, less than your position, less of your position in the company, and more for your team. This will establish a culture of trust and respect that will stem the tide of any challenges or changes that happen down the road. So a critical component, and this is one of my biggest pet peeves, don't treat people like resources. They're not pieces on a chessboard to man be manipulated and moved around. Again, don't be in a back room somewhere with your leadership talking about, oh, we need to make this change, so we're gonna move this person over here, and we're going to reevaluate this, what this person's working on. Bring them in, let them know. These are people whose livelihood and lives depend on their job and their career path. You wanna make sure that you're not completely disrailing somebody that was potentially on a path and taking him a new direction. I could rant about that all day, so. <laughs> hey. 
And then be your team's biggest advocate. Be out there within the organization, the rest of the leadership, the rest of the stakeholder teams, and champion your team. Create transparency. Let them know what your team is doing, what impact you've had. It's, at Amazon, it's, again, it's that self-discovery. A lot of leaders sort of depend on individuals to do this for themselves. I don't buy that. I think as the leader, you have to be the one out there. This is a team that you built. These people are doing amazing work, and you have to be out there advocating for them. Finally, on the opposite side, you need to be doing the same within your own team. But when you're giving people feedback and you're congratulating them on a job well done, make sure you're always tying it back to the values. So you hire them based on the values. Make sure that you're leveraging those same values to indicate job well done or job not well done. And then one bonus comment here for all of you guys in that leadership role. You just need to show up. Show up day after day, be open, be honest. If you can't do that, then make a change. I per on a personal note, I got to the point at Amazon, it's a great company, but I couldn't be the leader that I wanted to be. So I opted out. I made a change. If I can't lead my people in the way that they need me to lead, then I'll go somewhere that can, where I can. Because the most influential message to a team is the action of its leader. So as leaders, you must build, inform, validate, empower, and care to create culture for your teams to thrive. And in the words of one of the greatest TV leaders of all time, Ron Swanson, you have to commit. You have to give it your all. You're not doing two jobs here. I've heard a lot of managers say, I've got like three jobs. I've got my day job, and I also have management, and so on. You have to commit to being a leader. With that, thank you. <laughs>